So today is the third Sunday of Lent. And each week I have been giving you a challenge. A challenge that I have lived out the week before. Again, I'm not asking you to do anything that I haven't already done. And some of it is not easy. The first week we asked for fasting. It's uh, two hours perhaps. In between meals, if I can get you coffee in the morning, and don't eat till dinner. Some of you say, oh, nope, I'm going to eat in the morning. This is not one of those situations where and nothing is forced. But the purpose was, if you feel hungry, you walk by and you normally snag a little candy dish. You normally, whatever, if you could feel the resistance, or you say, okay, I'm not going to do this. Then if you're faithful in the little things, you'll be faithful in the big things. So when sin comes along in your life, you're like, eh, no, I, I was able to not do that, so I'm going to not do that. And then, last week, some of you probably went a little crazy. I had asked you to find one hour of solitude and silence. Now, some of you cannot find a single silent place. Get close. One of the things I was very aware of. <laughs> For any of you who have a clock with a second hand on it, all of a sudden that noise became very, very loud. Batteries started coming out of clocks. Some of them I forgot to put back in. <laughs> Needless to say, down one hour. Not easy. And some of your heads, like, I got 15 minutes, Pastor, that's all you get done. That's fine. The goal was to allow God to speak to you in your silence. And now, I issued the third challenge. The third challenge is, as we read in our opening scripture today, repentance. Exactly is that. So, I'd like you to think for a moment of a massage. Has anybody ever had a massage? Alright? Has anybody had just a little, somebody rubbed your back, kind of your other shoulder? There's a difference between a little, you, you, you never get those little devices that it's got like all the little all those wires on it and you can do that on your head. And it's like, oh, this is so good. Or, or you ever get those little things where you just kind of roll it out a little bit. Or just, where you put it on your back and it just kind of moves around. So there's that type of massage. But there's also the Swedish massage. The deep tissue massage. The get on the elbows Baggage. And uh, I have a few hunches as to why. 
What I'm hoping this week is that you are not saddled with depression, rather that we can all gain an appreciation for what the gift of God is and the opportunity of what repentance really is. I'm going to give you a, different, or a definition for two words. And I want to make sure we're clear on that. Confession. Confession is acknowledgement or agreement. When you confess, you state what is. I confess that I am in front of you. Are we semi in agreement with that? Confession is acknowledgement. And when we confess our sins, we acknowledge our sins. Sometimes, that's as far as we can go. Get the wall? I said it. That's good enough. But now I'd like to bring out repentance. And repentance is to think differently, or to literally turn the other direction. So it's one thing to acknowledge it. It's another thing to think differently about it. We can start to see there's a slight difference between confession and repentance. In fact, in uh, the Hebrew, where, we, where, uh, where they look at it, confession is never done out loud. You don't confess in front of other people, so you do not disrespect them. Do not saddle them with your baggage. Confession is something that you do to the Lord. As we read in 1 John, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. We shall be saved. Repentance goes a little further. Because as I said, confession is this acknowledgement. How great is God? He says if we will acknowledge Him. We will confess Him. We will confess our faith. We will confess our sins. He'll forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And that's a good thing. Like I say, repentance goes further. In that when we take repentance, it's talked a lot about in the Gospels. In fact, when they come out, and Jesus is there, and John the Baptist is there, and people are asking stuff. They say, repent and be baptized. Turn from your ways. Be submerged. Come up anew. And move forth. It's a lot. Repentance, we see it, a thematic portion in the Gospels and Acts. And if we were to think differently about something, then that changes how we treat it. I think it's red dye number 40. It's made out of crushed up beetles. <laughs> so for some of you who really love those hot Cheetos, <laughs> and you look in the back of those things, and it says red dye number 40, that's made from crushed up beetles. Yeah. And so if you think, I don't like bugs. I'm not eating bugs. Then when you look at hot Cheetos in the future, or anything with Red dot number 40, you may think, hmm, I don't know if I want to eat that anymore because I don't really want to eat bugs. <laughs> Some of you have no problem. <laughs> but any of us, when told some things, will think differently about them in the future. Perhaps there are companies you no longer support because you found out certain things and certain business practices. Perhaps there are people you are no longer friends with because of things that they have done to you, that they have revealed to you, that you were not aware of, and now that's just, that's the why. We treat people, we think differently of them, of situations, of items, when we think differently about them. Unfortunately, some of this is bad. We see a lot of racism happening because people think differently they look different, so I will think differently about them. You get to know people, and stereotypes, what are they? They're major problems. <coughs> Imagine if you 
went to a church where the only people who were allowed to go to that church were the people of whatever ethnicity, your ethnicity perhaps. And some of you, dare I say it, are mixed. So you either A, can go two places, or B, you can't go any place. And these are the type of things that can cause mental, and we look at these, it gets all frustrated. And as we prepare for these things, I want you to think in relation to repentance, not about how you deal with other people, but how you deal with sins, or the things that are far from God. A change in how we think creates a change in our actions. We act differently. In the Gospel of Acts, we are invited to think differently about how we are living our lives. So this week, when you set aside your 30 minutes, pick your day, your time, your location, and these are the four areas I'd like you to try to think about. I want you to not think of church work. I don't want you to think of the these and the thous and big words like consubstantiation and things like that. Don't worry about that. I want you to use your own words. Ask God to speak to you in your own words, your own language, and to shine His light on your life and to help you to see things for what they really are. See things for what they really are. In fact, as we read earlier in verse 8, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So when you go out today and say, oh, I got nothing to worry about this week, I don't even repent because I got nothing wrong with me. Ask any family member. They'll let you know really quick. <laughs> They keep you honest. But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So we start with this action of confession, realization, acknowledgement. Because if we claim we have not sinned, we make Him out to be a liar in His word. There's no place in us. So ask God to show His light to help us to see things for what they really are. If you have a life that's with wrapping paper and all pretty, but we open it and there's nasty stuff in there, it's not happening. I want you, if you, need, if you want to take a note, that's fine, but if you're not sure what to read scripture-wise to prepare for this, I give you three sets. The first one is Exodus chapter 20. Some of you are familiar with them. It's called the Ten Commandments. Exodus chapter 20. Read those. And as you read them, God says, Hey, 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 this is you.
like as far over as they can go. Invite them over for dinner and be civil, regardless of their opinions. Can you truly love them? I'm thinking most of us can't get to the first course. We're having cheeseburgers and that's it, get on out of here, I can't stand you to talk. But if you're a loving person, you're going to find out that there are some things in your life that you would put up barriers against other people because of their political opinion. Now in the past, people could come to church and they could be in the same church and be on different political parties. We've come to a point in our society today where you can barely even be in the same room, let alone the same church of somebody who has a different opinion. And people today are very clear on what their opinions are. Some of you remember the phrase of, ever, of opinions. Of opinions
Because that's where we as Christians feel bad. And it's hard for us to tell other people what Jesus has done. Because we're always walking around with that rain cloud. Avalon, you've had the chance to be the baddest of all of us. Because you've been here the longest. <laughs> but on the other side, you have had the chance to be the goodest. The best. The best. The best. The best. Because you have been here the longest. <laughs> We're not here to compare ourselves to those who have been here longer. Our goal is to compare ourselves to the cross. Hmm. And when Jesus died on the cross, he took all the sins of the world and he held them, he held them in his hands. And then he died and went into the grave and took them with him. But when he came out on Easter Sunday, he came out anew. He left that stuff behind. Just as we are baptized when we come up, you have been forgiven. You have been redeemed. You have been saved. And it doesn't matter what you have done. The Lord will work with you. See what that feels like this week. 30 minutes. Prep yourself. Confess. Repent. And then I'll add a fifth one. Breathe. Don't feel oppressed. When you repent and you try to think differently, know that God will encourage you and strengthen you and help you so that as you move forward, you are not in a life of opposition. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time together and we thank you for the opportunity to be present in your house. And thank you, O oh God, for your peace on our lives. And thank you, O oh Lord, for the love in which you have for us. And thank you, God, for forgiving us our sins. Lord, as we look in our lives, as you help us, speak to us, Lord, in our language, in our words. Don't be fancy. Help us to see it, to acknowledge it, to repent, and be able to move forward. As we approach Easter, as we approach this joyful occasion, and we take these momentary moments displeasure, pain, anguish, the hard stuff, the massages that hurts, only to know that we will have release and freedom. Lord God, I ask that you would bless our tithes, our offerings, that you would bless the giver and the gift. May both be faithful, advance your kingdom. May life be changed. May your kingdom be advanced. We praise you, Holy Father, for all.